Hi guys, it's April and it's another review. So I will do this review the same way I do all of my other reviews. I will have the non-spoilery section up front followed by the spoiled filled dump afterwards. And of course, I will let you know when that happens. And I will also let you know that I received a copy of The Will in the Wild by Charlie and Holmberg for a free and honest review. That of course has not swayed my opinion on this book whatsoever. And with that said, let's get into it. The Will in the Wild is a story of a young girl named Ina who lives next to the wild woods. All of her life she has heard stories of mistings who come out of the wild woods and who are meant to be feared. Her mother had been killed by a misting and so she's grown up with this knowledge that mistings are not good. One day she has a run-in with one of these mistings, and she decides to call on yet another misting for help. Through a series of events, Maculus, the misting that she calls up, is stuck in the moral realm and needs her help breaking the curse and getting back. The story follows these two individuals as Maculus tries to break the curse and tries to take Ina's soul through a kiss, and Ina as she tries to break the curse to let Maculus return home. This is a very character driven story so you get a lot of internal dialogue going on as both of these characters start to learn a little bit more about themselves, learn a little bit more about heart, a little bit more about soul, and what all of that means. This world has a very Russian feel to it. I'm not sure that's exactly what they were going for in this story, but as I was reading about mistings and as all of that world building started to happen, it reminded me a lot of Russian folklore and a lot of the creatures that reside in those stories. They've been translated into mistings, more of these demonic entities, things that hunt humans in the night that can't stay very long in our realm, which also gives them a little bit of a fey feel. There's a mix of different things, I think, that come together in this story, but it still gives it this very fairy tale like feel which I enjoyed quite immensely. You have a story of a very heart-wrenching romance start to form as you go through this as well. I felt Ina's grief the most as I was reading through the story. She was the character that compelled me. She was very strong-willed. She wanted to be very educated so I grasped onto that. This story has a very Beauty and the Beast vibe which isn't at all surprising given the characters that are involved and I like seeing the world around the Mistings develop. However, Edna and Maculus were the only characters that ever had any true development. Everything else was very flat, even the world still felt very surface level. There were a lot of things that were hinted at in the story, but they were never brought to fruition. I had a lot of questions about dad, about mom, about grandma, about all these side characters that felt like they had some significance in the story, especially in the ways that they were mentioned, but you never got the full story of them. You never got the tidbits that started to play out in the story, but then fell away as some of the action sequences started happening and it came closer to the end. I feel like the story could have been developed a little bit more, at least the world and everything outside of the romance that is happening between these two characters. There is little bits and pieces that are put in there to help push them forward, but a lot of it is very much character driven. It's them internalizing a lot of things and dealing with a lot of things and slowly coming together through all of that, which isn't bad. I love stories that are character driven, that have this slow burn romance feel, but it was almost too simple outside of that, that I don't feel like it held up the rest of the story. It was a very quick read. It was a very enjoyable read. It is something that I feel like could be explored a whole lot more. If you like Beauty and the Beast style stories, if you like that slow turn of someone as they start dealing with heart and soul and everything that feelings entail. I recommend this read. It is a fun little romance and it is something that is good for a quick weekend read. Now this is the part in this review where I start going more into some spoilery type things. So if you plan on reading this book, highly recommend that you pause it now, go read the book and come back and we can start a conversation. But I'm just gonna start saying words. Now honestly, the story is so short that I don't have a lot of things that I just want to get out into the universe. This is a fairly standard YA hard creature loving a soft woman kind of story. Like I said before, it's mostly the misting mythology that I enjoyed seeing and I think pulled the story a little bit. Just seeing what 
Maculus was and how all of the different creatures exist. I feel like dad, mom, and grandma were just props, but there were points in the story where you felt like their story was supposed to be important, but it wasn't pushed enough. You have the story of mom dying and dad getting Ina out, and it's repeated several times, but we never get the actual story. I feel like that story, which then prompted dad to go get the will stone, the telling stone, from the monster realm in the first place. There's so much backstory there that influenced everything that comes along that we didn't really get to see and grandma had a huge influence in raising Ina but because grandma's dead we never get to see her we get snippets but we don't get the full story of grandma and the mistings which seems to play into Ina and her misting story. There are a lot of parallels that were kind of hinted at, but because you don't have the full story, it feels like a tease. I, I keep getting back at this point that it feels like it was supposed to be important, which made this world feel very fuzzy. There was a lot of vagueness that happened as all of this was being built out and all of this was done and I think that was my biggest issue with the story. Overall, I really did like it. It was a, well, not necessarily light romantic read, but it was a very quick, gut-wrenching kind of romantic read. I liked how things towards the end started to feel like maybe things weren't gonna wrap up nicely. I've gotten to the point in my life where I almost like the stories that don't have a clean cut conclusion, a soft, easy, people pleasing ending. I like those we love each other but maybe we'll never be together kind of stories. I don't know, maybe it's just the mood that I'm in at this point in my life. Tell me down below if you've read this book what your thoughts are. This is one of those reads that I enjoy doing but I can see where there could be a lot of fixes. And with that, if you would like to keep up to date on all of my reviews and every time I upload, subscribe down below and I heard your beautiful faces.